This is the grade 7 math practice test for T. And ready on this version of the test, this is question number 26. It is a calculator allowed question, as you can see with the little icon up here. Now, you may think, oh good, it's two parts, right? Right at the end of the test, the thing you want is to work on two parts of a question. That's the best. But here we are. Over the summer, Marty read four times as many pages as the number of pages Nelson and Jennifer read combined. Mm, we get it, Marty. The book is better than the movie. Anyway, Marty read 1,860 pages, and Nelson read 240 pages. For part A, we need to select an equation that could be solved to find the number of pages that Jennifer read. And for part B, how many pages did Jennifer read? So we're going to find the equation, and then we're going to solve the equation. It's the circle of mathematical life, at least math class life. So the first thing I want to do is look at the statement given and make a generic version of it so that I can see where things are supposed to go. So Marty read four times as many pages as the number of pages Nelson and Jennifer read combined. And there's a kind of a, a red flag here. So you see four times and then later on you see an and statement. So you're doing four times a combination of two things. That almost always means parentheses is going to be somehow involved. So I'm going to go over here and write Marty we'll assume Marty here means how many pages he's read, is 4 times the amount that Nelson read plus Jennifer. So as long as you understood that the 4 times the 2 things meant parentheses, you're almost there. What we need to do now is substitute in values uh, that are provided. So Marty has 1860 as pages not as a year. Nelson has 240 pages. And then for Jennifer, there's no number, because we haven't found it yet, but there is a variable P. One of the things that when I taught at the high school level, for some reason people couldn't get past, is that an, equ an equal statement, an equation, is defined by an equal sign with the same relative value on each side, which means it doesn't matter what order that they're in as long as they're on the same side of the equal sign when you start as when you finish. So I can flip these around all I want. I can flip this over to 1860 over here and then 4 times 240 plus P right here. And the reason I would do that is because it's one of the answer choices. That's kind of the whole point. You'll notice that this is this, but I've had some people over the years get to this step and just quit. It was, for some reason, it was more prominent at that level than it was for, uh, you know, seventh grade level. You guys aren't as rigid in your thinking, I guess. Well, well done. But just know that if you have an equal sign, you can flip the order as long as everything moves and stays relatively in the same place. So there's your answer here. Looking at some of the other um, ideas about why these would be wrong, A, C, and D. A big issue is that when you have this 4 on the outside of the parentheses, you need to distribute it, right? So 4 times 240 is 960. Unless you're adjusting for that, there's no way that you can get to the correct answer because you'll also have 4 times P. This one has 4 times P, right? That's good. But it never does 4 times the 240, so that was why that one is incorrect. Down here, same type of thing that's not there. It's like they didn't do parentheses is the big issue, I would imagine. They just saw four times Nelson, and they said, okay, well, whatever. And the question's even nice enough to tell you it doesn't say four times Jennifer. It says four times Nelson, but the and is what gives you the parentheses. So there's no real reason why you shouldn't think that you'd multiply four times 240. Who knows, without the parentheses anyway. This one is a whole lot of mess. Basically, they'll work the problem out, and they did multiply by the 4, and then they know that when they have 4p here, and we'll show you what that looks like in just a second, you'll have to divide by 4, but it's like 1860 lived in a world that didn't exist when they did that. I don't get it. It's a mess. Anyway, this easily set up b as it is. Now, let's solve it, right? I'm going to go back to this stage, 
and I may have my eraser too big, so I'm just going to rewrite that section. In the form that we've been, that we've learned the answer should be settled. Now, 4 times 240. Again, it's distributive. This is a calculator allowed section. You don't have to just know that. You can absolutely use the calculator, and I would suggest that you do it. Especially when you get to the end of a test, you get kind of nervous. 4 times P. Now, my ultimate goal is to get this var variable by itself, right? So when I do it, I always draw a line there just to sort of identify what operation I need to perform. If the combination of integers or variables or whatever are on the same side of that line, I do whatever it says, the operation given. If I have to move something from one side of the equation to the other, I need to use an opposite operation to get there. Sometimes when you get to this point, it's easy to not really know where to go because there's no given mathematical symbol in front of the 960, so it's easy to forget. Um, and if this was a minus here, it would make it even more complicated. So if you wanted to take a step and just keep everything in order, that would be fine. You don't have to, but you can. Now, I'm getting this by itself. The first thing I need to do is eliminate plus 960. Because it's the furthest thing away from the variable. See, the four is like right next to it. They're hanging out. They're friends. This is kind of like the other person that hangs out in your peer group, and you're like, why are you here? So they're going to get rid of that 960 first. And if you're like, I don't have anybody in my peer group that's like, why are you here? And you're probably that person. Anyway, 4p is left. To get rid of multiply, I need to divide. They're on different sides of the equation, right? And then finally, get the, I think I saw the oldest calculator in history up here. There we go. Two hundred and twenty-five. And that's the number that goes here. So this is our equation in the end of all things. Move this out. Um, this is the equation we're going to use, 4 times 240 plus P equals 1860. And when I work that out, I can see that Jennifer has read 225. Should you check your answer? Absolutely you should. If you have time. If you don't have time, do what you have to do. I mean, test wisely, I guess, is my best advice. So I should be able to put 225 where this is. So I will do 240 plus 225 and hit equal and then I'm going to multiply that by 4 because that's what happened here and I should get 1860 and I do. So I know that my answer is likely correct for part A and then for part B because the equation I determined made the answer work out like it's a posta as my children used to say and that's it.